Hi guys, Reaper here. Thanks for tuning in. Before you we have the Dominix, commonly referred to as the Space Potato. The Dominix is a Tech-9 battleship from the Galante Federation. I would say this is the most versatile battleship in EVE Echoes. Its predominant focus is being a drone boat and being able to use various different drones as it doesn't have a specific bonus to one type, it has a bonus to all drones. Also for the high slots you're able to fit whatever you want, there's no specific bonus so whatever your weapon choice is, whatever you're skilled in, you can throw it on this ship to fulfill different purposes. Looking at the ship attributes, for every level of large drone operation trained, you will have a 40% bonus to drone DPS. That is to all different types of drones and different sizes of drones. A 5% bonus to the optimal range and a 5% bonus to the tracking speed. Now, there's a very important bonus at the bottom there. For every level of battleship command, you'll have a 10 kilometer bonus to the drone control range. And until sentry drones are fixed, this is the only way you're viably going to be able to use them. So if we have a look at the ship fitting moving along, you can see here headline figure, we've got 1,291 DPS with my current fitting, uh, a whopping 104,000 effective hit points, 25,000 shield hit points and just under 30,000 armor, which means this should really be an armor tanking ship. However, it doesn't too much matter. You can do shield boosting or armor tanking. It's up to you. It depends which resistances you're you're looking to go against. Uh, also, thirty thousand structure. If you are looking to tank this more and go for the brawling build, I'd recommend going shield tanked. Looking at the capacitor with the micro warp drive I've got fit at the moment, we're looking at a seven. Uh, if we put the micro warp drive in, sorry, we're looking at a three minute fifty three second complete capacitor time, but without it and that doesn't take into consideration the fact that the capacitor will be activated to boost it up. So that's a pretty good level of cap and it, you should be able to dictate range and, and keep yourself safe for long enough. The uh, scan resolution is quite abysmal and the signature radius is huge. Navigation, this is a bit faster than the Megathron, which I previously covered. And with the micro warp drive, should be able to reach with the max skills that I have here. 1,200 uh, meters per second. In the high slots, I've gone for strike cannons. I think that strike cannons are quite possibly uh, the best long-range turret in the game. You could easily fit for this particular sn um, sniper fit I've gone with. Uh, heavy missile launchers or uh, large rail guns, rifled rail guns. It really depends what you want to go with. But again, for the high thermal and uh, explosive damage, I've decided to go for the strike cannons, mainly because I am actually skilled in auto cannons at the moment on the live server. And I'd just like to point out that this is the formation server. Whatever you see here could be subject to change or modification before it actually comes out. Three target painters because sentry drones have terrible tracking and a large C-type shield booster. All of the modules you'll see in this video are readily available on the server. I've uh, specifically done that way so that you can see what items you should go out and get. Supervisor omni omnidirectional tracking links, two of those, because again, sentry drones have such poor tracking and we want to boost them up as much as we can. They're going to be our main source of DPS. And then we've got one Nestworm damage amplifier to give us that additional boost of DPS. I've gone with a micro warp drive and a large capacitor battery. If you wanted, you could swap this build for a full uh, three slot shield tank, swap the micro warp drive to an afterburner, and you'll be tanking and being able to get up front using something like auto cannons. You can see here the bouncers have got a 56 kilometer optimal range and a 72 kilometer fall off. So I would ideally like to be sat at 80 to 100 kilometers. How Sentry drones work, I'll explain in a second, but you drop them, they're fixed and static, and then you travel around. Two of the firepower augmenters, and I've gone for one of the range control rigs. I would swap that range control rig for a damage rig, but because the sentry drones are bugged at the moment, I need to have the biggest control range I can, as drones are using that to attack NPCs rather than optimal and fall off. So you may have noticed since, or you may not have noticed, 
since the last patch, if you click and drag your drones up to where you would normally record them in space, this lovely new window pops open, which I'm very appreciative of the devs for putting into the game, as previously you'd have to open up your entire ship fitting screen and you would lose your visual of the map. And to change all of your drones, hot swapping them in space, you're just literally tap, 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 and you're done. There is a disadvantage, which I, I do think could be improved, is that when you change your drones, they become unstacked. I would prefer it that if, if you could have an option that every time you swapped your drones out, they would just appear stacked in the one place. But it's definitely a move in the right direction, and for many players, this will be a welcome, a very welcome change indeed. If this was on the live server, I would have a lot more drones and different types of drones, but for the purpose of this, I've gone for hobgoblins, hammerheads, and ogres as my secondary choice, aside from using the bouncers. Thermal damage is a very good all-round type of damage, as it works well against shield, and it works okay against the armor. Looking at my fitting with the ogres, I've taken a bit of a drop in DPS. At DPS the Sentry drones are doing 20 DPS more than an ogre, so they are the optimal weapon choice to use for the damage. Just going to swap out and put in the hobgoblins to have a look at their DPS with this ship, with the max skills. It's quite important as if you're being tackled by a frigate at longer range, or if you get in trouble with any of the smaller ships, you can use these to help overcome some of the smaller targets. Let's see what our light or, or small drone arsenal looks like. We will be using these to defend us against any elite micro warp driving frigates. We can see here that there, we've got 424 DPS, which is actually really good. Uh, might be worthwhile using warriors over the hobgoblins for the uh, much faster drones as they have the quicker speed. But again, it's this is a very versatile ship. You can use this to handle any situation and you won't be stuck or, or limited by not being able to hit ships. Some battleships do have that problem and this is something that you could fit out to pretty much do whatever you wanted to do. Easy to go in and brawl or sit back happily being a long range sniper. So moving along to the combat part, let's see how these drones work. We are warping in here to a expert level mission with some tech 10 ships i'm walk warping in at a longer range here i'm going to deploy the sentry drones and then see whether they're going to attack at the 90 kilometer range i think some of these targets are around 80 kilometers from us at the moment so we'll deploy the drones and if we zoom in here and see They've deployed and it looks like they're deployed inside of the hull, which is kind of strange. You would have thought they would have separated out a bit further, but uh, hey-ho, it is what it is. So yeah, let's get some damage on this first frigate. We're still locking him up. Again, the scan res, as I mentioned, is pretty abysmal. First of all, we're going to put on the target painters like so, and yeah, we had a Pretty quick one shot there. That was from the fearsome strike cannons which wreak havoc. Moving on to this next frigate, we're gonna get the sentry drones going. So you can see there they've just hit for 900 damage and it's like a machine gun now because we've got all these different drone shooting plus we've got a separate weapon system firing. That drone went down with the greatest of ease. Now we're hitting up a cyclone. Let's see how uh, quickly at this kind of a range we can get him down. One thing that's reassuring here is that the sentry drones are firing at their kind of maximum range. I can make them shoot within 100 kilometers. I tested the sentry drones using my Tempest in a previous video, and although they could hit out to somewhere like 150 plus kilometers, they would only shoot targets that were within 35 kilometers. That's because it's using the wrong attribute to be able to hit out for damage. The drones are using the control range rather than optimal and fall off. So that is the current bug. And it's unfortunate that I have to present this video to you, which is specifically fit to overcome this bug. What would be ideal is having the bug fixed, which is the simpler solution if you ask me. So yeah, as you can see, we're getting through these targets really, really easily. I can't see there's going to be any problems with this whatsoever. And I think that my verdict on this ship is that you would be able to deploy your drones uh, at a longer range 
And if you wanted, put some higher DPS weapons in your uh, high slots, perhaps go with auto cannons or rapid uh, large launchers. The rapid missile launchers, as I saw in the Typhoon video, have really good damage application. So yeah, you could fit a better tank, maybe one or two adaptives in there, uh, swap out the micro warp drive for an afterburner and go in, get close and just make sure you've got yourself in a direct line or path between the NPC and your sentry drones to kind of keep the angular velocity to as close to zero as possible. Um, you could also go with some more nest worms, perhaps fit a, a web to web things down and use the ogres to go and brawl with as well. Um, again, this ship is super, super versatile. It would be very hard to determine an overall this is the best fitting because this is one of those ships in Eve Echoes that can fulfill pretty much any play style out there. So this ship really is for everybody. Lots more videos to come, guys. If you've enjoyed this video and this uh, current series of the battleships, if you push that subscribe button, you'll have a and ding the bell icon, you'll have notifications of my upcoming videos when they're released. Thanks for watching.